All right, 1.3, properties of graphs of functions. What we're going to look at is different properties of functions, and this will be expressed over several videos. In the first part, we're looking at some definitions. Intervals of increase are the intervals within a function's domain where the y values get larger, moving from left to right. So what we're imagining here is that as we move from left to right, imagine this line, what's happening is the y values are increasing. So if we have an a, for example, an x and y axis and a graph moving up, what we'll see is that from left to right, the graph is moving in the up. The y values are moving up as we move from left to right. Again, from left to right, you're noticing the graph is moving in an upwards direction. Now this is different from an interval of decrease. An interval of decrease are the intervals within a function's domain where the y values get smaller, moving from left to right. So again, if we imagine a line coming from left to right, watching the pink line, what happens is the y values start to decrease. So as we move from left to right, the y values are decreasing. All right, another example is we're looking at from 1.2, we looked at an absolute function. So looking at this absolute function here, you can see that moving from left to right, these what's happening here? Well, if you think about it, the y values are decreasing as we move from left to right. And over here, as you move from left to right, the y values are increasing. So if we're talking about intervals of increasing, we can see that the graph moves from zero to infinity, it is increasing decreasing from value, from negative infinity up to zero. So again, from negative infinity to zero, the y values are decreasing. From zero to infinity, the y values are increasing. All right, next. An even function is any function that is symmetric about the y-axis. What this means is that Algebraically, all even functions have the property f at negative x is equal to f at x. What that means is that I can take a particular graph, reflect it horizontally, and that will give me the original function again. So, let's look at an example. Looking at this function here, we can see that if I take this blue function and I reflect it horizontally, so it reflects horizontally, I get the original function again. So this graph was reflected horizontally from the blue graph. And this is an expression algebraically. So if I take f at negative x, which means a horizontal reflection, I will get the original function. If that is the case, then we can just say that it has, when we describe the symmetry, we can say it's an even function because it's, it is even because it has it is symmetric about the y-axis. So again, reflecting horizontally, we get the original function, then it must be even. Well, what happens when we reflect an even function and it's not? Sorry, we reflect a function and it is not even. What do we do next? Well, we can test for odd symmetry. An odd function is any function that has a rotational symmetry about the origin. Algebraically, this means that all odd functions have the property f at negative x is equal to negative f at x. What I mean by this, and the best way to explain that, is the way I look at it to tell you. First, we test to even. When we test even, we test horizontally. Now, because let's say a function is not even, then we test for odd. What that means is if I take an original function and I reflect it horizontally and vertically. So again, what this means is this is your horizontal reflection that we would have done for even, and because it's not even, we then test for odd by doing a vertical reflection. If we reflect horizontally, then we reflect vertically, and that function is a back to the original function, f at x, that means, folks, that the function must be odd. Let's look at an example. In our case, we're looking at this thing, this particular graph here. If I reflect this particular graph horizontally, I will get this graph. So horizontally, I take it and I reflect it horizontally. 
What that means then, if you notice, these two functions are not the same. So looking at these two functions, they are not the same. This is reflected horizontally. Then I take this graph and I reflect it. I reflect it vertically. And what happens when I reflect it vertically is look here, folks. There it is. So I first take it and reflect it horizontally to test for even. Even fails. Then I go ahead and test for odd. Once I reflect it vertically, folks, that means that the function is the original function. All right, so let's go through that one more time just to explain that to you. So we have a reg regular function that we test for even by reflecting horizontally. Then, because it's not even, we then test for odd by reflecting vertically. We would reflect vertically, and guess what? We get back the original function. So reflecting horizontally, then vertically, and gives us the original function. Now what happens if it's if it fails the odd test? So it's an it's not it is neither. Okay, so neither symmetry happens when a function is neither odd, and sorry, neither even nor odd. So we're looking at a function where the even symmetry fails, so reflecting horizontally doesn't match, and then again we reflect vertically, and that doesn't match, so we describe it as neither. It is neither even nor odd in terms of its symmetry. So let's look at a couple of examples. On the next one, we're going to look at testing algebraically. So let's say we have, we're going to test for even first. That's how we test for even. To test for odd, we take the function that we're given and reflect both ways. So let's look at an example of where this happens. First of all, let's look at a function, let's call it, let's use the reciprocal function for example. How do we test if it's even or odd? Well the reciprocal function, which is 1 over x, that's the equation of it, we first test for even, so f at negative x. So that's the horizontal reflection. What will that give us? 1 over negative x. So that's what we plug in. Every time we see an x, we're going to plug it with negative x. So we plug it in to the bottom. Looking at this, can I simplify this any further? And the answer to that is no. And because of that, it is not even. So now let's test for odd. We now plug in negative at the whole function plus where the x is, we put a negative. So again, we're doing a horizontal and vertical reflection. To do that, we take a negative of the whole function, and don't forget that the x gets replaced with negative x. Well, can this be simplified, folks? And if you look very carefully, the two negatives will actually cancel each other out, and you end up with 1 over x. Algebraically, look, it gives us back the original function. And because that's the case, it equals the original function, we can say that this function, 1 over x, is in fact odd. It is an odd function because we can reflect it both horizontally and vertically to determine that it must be odd. So f at, let's look at another example. f at x is equal to 3x squared plus 125. What do we do there? So we look at this function we plug in, first we test for even, so we plug in f at negative x, we test for even first, and we find out when we plug in negative x for the x in 3x squared plus 125, so we substitute the negative x for x, we substitute, we can simplify this expression to equal 3x squared plus 125. And what does that mean? Well, that, folks, is the original function. Because it's the original function, that means that that last one, this last one over here, is even. So we always test for even, and once we've tested for even, then we test for odd. If it is not even. If it is even, we can stop. Alright, one more example. Let's look at one more. f at x is equal to x squared plus 6x or sorry, minus 6x plus 9. We're going to test this for either, test the symmetry for this. So, we also know that x squared minus 6x plus 9 
is x minus 3 all squared. So whether we use this or this, we can test for even or odd. Now, we're going to first test for even by plugging in f at negative x. And we plug it in. And look, folks, when we plug it in and we simplify the expression, we end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9. Does that equal f at x? Well, no, it doesn't. So what would we do next? We would test for odd. So, um, so we can test for odd if you want. So algebraically, we plug in, let's see what we would do. Plug in negative f at negative x, and we plug it in. So we have negative on the front of the whole thing, and then inside would be negative x, all squared, minus 6 times negative x, plus 9, which we've already done, don't forget, we've done that in the previous question, and that will give us negative x squared plus 6x, sorry, not plus 6x, it would give us minus 6x and minus 9, because we take this negative that's here and multiply it to everything inside here, and don't forget that everything inside here was already done in the previous part, and we find out that that doesn't equal f at x. And because that doesn't equal f at x, we know that this particular function, x squared minus 6x plus 9, is neither even nor odd. So it's neither symmetry. All right. That's the end of the explanation of symmetry. Let's look at one more definition before we go to the next video. A continuous function is any function that does not contain any holes or breaks over its entire domain. So from left to right, there are no holes or breaks. Now, a point of discontinuity is a break in the graph of a function. For example, you're looking at maybe some asymptotes. An asymptote is a break in a function and a hole. A hole is also a break in the function. Functions can be categorized based on their graphical characteristics, such as their domain and range, x and y intercepts, whether they're continuous or discontinuous based on as if there's any asymptotes or holes, increase and decrease intervals, their symmetry, whether they're even, odd, or neither, and finally their end behavior. End behavior, folks, has to do with the arrows. What are the arrows doing in each part of the graph? So some, whatever how many arrows there are, you're going to describe the end behavior of every one of those arrows. All right, that's the end of this part of the video, folks. Let's move on to the next video to look at examples of this.